السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن اهتدى بهداه وبعد إن أوانا ما تاد مزا إنا سنكب دكات سبود الله الله يبر متاري آمين 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 بارك الله فيكم ما شاء الله تبارك الله أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي أنزل على عبده الكتاب ولم يجعل له عوجا قيما لينذر بأسا شديدا من لدنه ويبشر المؤمنين ويبشر المؤمنين الذين يعملون الصالحات أن لهم أجرا حسنا ما كثين فيه أبدا وينذر الذين قالوا اتخذ الله ولدا ما لهم به من علم ولا لآباء كبرت كلمة تخرج من أفواههم إن يقولون إلا كذبا فلعلك باخع نفسك على آثارهم إن لم يؤمنوا بهذا الحديث أسفا إنا جعلنا ما على الأرض زينة لها لنبلوهم أيهم أحسن عملا وإنا لجاعلون ما عليها صعيدا جرزا أم حسبت أن أصحاب الكهف والرقيم كانوا من آياتنا عجبا إذ أوى الفتية إلى الكهف فقالوا ربنا آتنا من لدنك رحمة وهيئ لنا من أمرنا رشدا فضربنا على آذانهم في الكهف سنين عددا ثم بعثناهم لنعلم أي الحزبين أحصى أي الحزبين أحصى لما لبثوا أمدا نحن نقص عليك نبأهم بالحق إنهم فتية آمنوا بربهم وزدناهم هدى In the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, most gracious, most merciful, all praise is indeed due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nourisher, cherisher, sustainer, provider, protector, curer, the one in whose hands lies the absolute ownership of everything in existence. We praise him and we send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless him and his entire household without exception. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless all the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam without exception. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless every single one of you without exception. Amen. My brothers and sisters, indeed, it is an honor to be here in this beautiful city of Kanu this morning. It is indeed a dream come true. I have colleagues who studied with me in Medina Tul Munawwara who are from the city of Kanu. And when I heard the word or the name Kanu, immediately my face became bright. And I said to myself, yes, that is the place I would like to go, mashallah. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us always in touch with goodness May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who always seize the opportunities of goodness. I explain to you why. Today's topic is our youth, our future. 
Firstly, who is youth? I remember when we used to have youth programs when we were young, there were old people who were there as well. And we used to tell ourselves, but we can't speak because the old people are here and we are too shy. And later on, I heard a definition which made me happy and made everyone happy. If your age happens to be with two digits, you are part of the youth. <laughs> which means from 10 all the way to 99, you are still okay. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. You can ask an old man. He says, I feel young, mashallah. I'm young at heart, even though I can't walk, subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us healthy. We definitely need to seize every opportunity of goodness. If you don't seize an opportunity, guess what? Someone else will seize it. Let me give you an example. If I did not come here to the city of Kano, perhaps someone else was going to do that job. While I can, I need to do it. I need to get it done. Brother Jamil yesterday was telling me we need to visit this place, that place. What do you think? I said everywhere. We will go for as long as we are alive and okay. And Allah is with us. Because if we don't go, the hadith of the Prophet wasallam, it's a powerful narration. We take it for granted, my brothers and sisters. The statements uttered by the most blessed of creation, the most noble of all prophets, is a statement that is really very powerful. But the problem with us is we read it and we take it for granted. When the doctor tells you you need to stretch and you need to do this and that, we will listen to the doctor. But when Muhammad wasallam taught us how to fulfill salah correctly, which includes the stretches that the doctors teach us, we are not interested in fulfilling salah. Why is it? It is because we've become weak, my brothers and sisters. And that is why we have reminders of this nature. He says, Ightanim khams and qabla khams. Seize five opportunities before they are overtaken by five situations. What are these five? The Prophet wasallam. one of them, he speaks of the youth. The young age, you are young, you can do things. You are young, you are able. He speaks about your health, he speaks about your time, he speaks about so many other things. He speaks about your wealth and he speaks about your life as well. Seize these opportunities, they will never last forever. If you have wealth, it will not last forever. It may last sometimes a little bit longer than others, but at the point of death, you do not take your wealth with you. Whatever you spent while you were alive, that went next to your name. It is written, this man spent this amount and this was his. It's yours, gone in your book. What you did not spend, it is left for others to claim ownership of once you have passed away. So remember, when we are Generous, we are generous for ourselves. In Ahsantum Ahsantum Li Anfusikum Wa in Asatum Falaha. In Surah Al Isra, Allah explains it beautifully. If you do good, Wallahi, it is for yourself, your own benefit. And if you do bad, it is against yourself. So learn to do good as you can, my brothers and sisters. Similarly, your time. We waste a lot of time. We spend so much time on the phone. Wallahi, wallahi, I promise you. What is of utmost importance is to be able to set yourself a timetable when it comes to your own device, your own phone. Don't think for a moment, you know what? It's my phone. I'm sitting on my own. I'm in my room. I'm not wasting time. Wallahi, it is a waste of time to sit on your phone for longer than a specific amount of time. People's marriages are on the rocks because someone doesn't know that when you get into the room or when you are in the bed, for example, forget that phone, turn it off completely. Are you ready to do that? Then you are ready to engage in the ingredient of success. But if you are not ready to give it up, your marriage will suffer strain. If she has the courage to tell you, in fact, let me word it the other way around. If he has the courage to tell you, may Allah forgive us, that you are spending too much time on your phone, then subhanallah, you may be fortunate. Sometimes we become arrogant and we say, no, 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 it's very important. Wallahi, can it be more important than someone who is sitting next to you? Imagine, do you know, one day I was speaking at the Dubai Peace Conference. And my topic was connected to social media and how it's affected the people and so on. And I hatched a plan. What was the plan? The plan was that my phone will ring while I'm speaking. It was planned. And I will tell the crowd, wait, I have a call. And I will answer the phone and I will talk. And I will see how irritated the crowd will get. And then I will put it down and say, brothers, that was planned. Look how irritated you were. And wallahi, it worked. It worked. If you go to YouTube, you will find the lecture. The phone rang 
And I picked it up and everyone was wa waiting. And I kept, oh, mashallah, brother, I'm in a very important lecture. I will speak to you later. I'm in a very important, there are thousands of people in front of me. I'm here. But wallahi, a little while later, people started making noise in the crowd because obviously it shows very bad character, right? I answered my, that's what we do every time for a lot of people. They are standing in front of us. We have the audacity to answer the phone. This person in front of you is a VIP. It might be the last time you are going to see them. When I say VIP, I'm talking of a very important personality in terms of a human being. Today, when I was driving through, I asked brother Jamil, I told brother Jamil, I said, you know what? I don't want these guards and all this thing happening. I'm not a politician. I'm just an ordinary Muslim. He says, look, we don't want to take chances. You don't know that it's an honor. It's really an honor. And we are not saying that there is anything dangerous, but it's just that all the people are so excited. We just need to ensure that nothing goes wrong. We don't want to cry after something goes wrong. So I said, okay, fair enough. After that, as we came in, I saw thousands of people outside and I said, my brothers, I feel so hurt. These are VIPs. VIPs. All of them. Every one of you is a VIP. Wallahi. Do you know why? You are here to listen to a good word, to touch your heart, to become a better person. And Wallahi, more important than me is the message. I am not important. I can die today. Wallahi. But the message will continue. Not my message. I have only been given some importance because I have conveyed the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's it. If I had any other message to give you, I was not going to be treated the way I am. Subhanallah. So what makes me humbled is the fact that people want to listen. But I need to bear in mind, Wallahi, I am perhaps exactly like you, if not even worse. We are all in need of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I said, my brother, isn't there a way we can put a screen outside? We can do some volume outside. There are people who have come from far and wide. You know, I learned a few words of Hausa only because I wanted you to feel the link, mashallah. When people learn a language, they learn the bad words first, okay? You are a witness that I tried to learn the good words first, mashallah. So to be honest with you, these are people who've come from far and wide. And subhanallah, I would like to thank you at this very outset for having made the time, the effort to come and sit tirelessly, perhaps for the tickets. We heard a few stories. Wallahi, I am not worth this, but the message is definitely worth that. May Allah make us move. I want to start off by saying, please, my brothers and sisters, I hope the intention in your heart is to change your life after today. I hope the intention in your heart is to contribute positively to the ummah from this day. I hope that the intention in your heart is not a selfish one, but a selfless one. Because my beloved youth, we look at you and we think and project the future. We'd like to look at a beautiful future when we see selfish people engaging in pleasures that will only last a few minutes. We begin to lose hope regarding the future. But when we see selfless people who are concerned about the future in a way that they tell themselves, I'm going to stay away from adultery. One, for the sake of Allah. Two, so that I can build my nation. It will be a nation of purity and chastity and goodness. That is when we will achieve success. If a person and says, look, I have an opportunity to be corrupt, but I will not make my money through corrupt means because of the sake of Allah, number one. Number two is I have a nation to worry about. And in the future, I don't want the trend to become such that we have to all be corrupt in order to earn. People must know we were in authority, but we were people who were upright. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and all of us with the same. Amen. My brothers and sisters, an example springs to my mind. If you were to go onto YouTube, and I'm sure we are all quite techno savvy here by the will of Allah. I see the old and the young, everyone with the latest phones, mashallah, and the iPads and everything else. And even the Samsung 7 is out and mashallah, everyone seems to be having it. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> so to be honest, I remember something someone sent to me in the form of a clip. That clip was a Sudanese shepherd somewhere in the desert of Saudi Arabia. Do you know he was a young man, perhaps 40 years old maybe. You can check it on YouTube. And they tested him, tested him to know what exactly he would do. He was in the desert all alone with some sheep and he was herding sheep. 
and people got to him with a lovely vehicle and they told him, they asked him a question or two, what are you doing and what is your salary and what have you and he didn't answer the questions unnecessarily but he definitely told him, you know what, I'm a shepherd, I come from Sudan or something of that nature and I am here and he was working on his own. So they told him, you know, we are looking for one animal. You have so many sheep. He says, Wallahi, these animals, they belong to my boss. They belong to my boss. So he says, you know what? We will pay you whatever you want. We can give you 200 riyal for this one. He said, Wallahi, if you give me 200,000, I'm not going to give it to you. If you give me how much? 200,000, I'm not going to give it to you. But they said, why? Because it belongs to someone else. They said, but he's not here. What do you mean he's not here? Is Allah not watching? They were shocked. Wallahi, they were shocked. They were actually totally taken aback. My brothers and sisters, later on we found a statement which says that the Sudanese people generally they have truthfulness in them. Why can't we hear the same about us? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us that way. Don't we want in the future, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, when the people speak about Kanu, they say that is a city where you drop your money, they will look for you in order to return the money. Subhanallah. Don't you want that to happen? Wallahi, the, the future is in your hands. You decide whether you are going to do that or not. Don't you want people to say, we go to Kanu, our sisters are in total peace. They are in such Peace that they don't need to worry about their dignity. No one is running and chasing after them. It is a city of purity. Don't you want to hear that? Well, you need to make the difference because people will hear the opposite if you don't make that difference. We don't want people to come and say, you go to Nigeria and you will be robbed. Astaghfirullah. Five people spoil it for the other five million. Do you know that? So why can't we make such a big difference? And mashallah, we have the press with us. They will start promoting such activity of goodness, alhamdulillah. I have visited Nigeria now for the fourth time. And to be honest, I have seen so much of goodness that I tell a lot of people I will always go back. They say, what is taking you back there? I have seen things that you people don't know. When I was young, we used to hear negative things only. As I grew older, I met people from Nigeria. I studied with them. Dr. Muhammad. Noor, who is here, he is with us. He is a colleague of mine. We sat together. He was from Kanu, always telling me about Kanu, sitting right next to me in Medina Munawara. And wallahi, as I grew older, I visited Abuja. I was so impressed. I saw the Muslimin. I saw lovely people, really good people. And to cap it all, the cherry on the cake was Kanu. When I visited here, the first thing I saw, do you want to know? Can I let you know? Okay, let me be honest with you. I jumped off the aircraft. And I noticed the weather is beautiful, beautiful. Now I have learned something. If you go to Mecca and you go to Medina, there is a difference in two things. Many things, but two things. Everyone will say Medina is calm. Mecca is a little bit heavy. Have you noticed that? Yes. Mashallah. May Allah take those who haven't been there. Amen. So I see Medina, the land is also very flat. The people are calm. The weather is cooler, right? Mecca is humid. There, there are some mountains and the people's attitude is similar to their weather and their surroundings. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. When I came to Kanu, I smiled because I knew if the weather is better than Lagos and Abuja, the people have to also be better. <laughs> By the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, but now we need to live the reality. Allah has blessed you already with things that draw people to you. Are you going to chase them away after they had a good feeling? Or are you going to follow that good feeling through? Subhanallah. It is up to you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all. So as I was saying, I came off, I noticed the weather. We jumped into the vehicle and we were going. And it happened to be the adhan of Salatul Maghrib at a certain point. And I saw something I've never seen before. Do you know what I saw? Something that made me smile. Wallahi, and I make dua for you. May Allah strengthen you all. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this a beacon of light for the rest of the nation and for the ummah. I saw people on the sides of the roads reading salah in small groups. They were not worried about anything. I, I, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about, right? In small groups, Salah is being read. Here there is one group, there, there is another group. And I'm in the vehicle. And I wanted to stop and to take a picture to say, Subhanallah, I need to capture this moment. But the brothers told me, you know what? It's not really a good idea to stop. You being who you are, I trust me, the whole of Kanu knows who you are.
So I looked and I said, Subhanallah, I am so touched that you know with us to stop whatever you are doing to fulfill the, 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 the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For me, that's a, the biggest achievement ever. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from you. May he strengthen you. Wallahi, there are people who notice this. They see it. It softens the heart of the good ones. You know what attracts people to you? I always tell the youth, you know what I'm saying is all connected to the topic because I'm encouraging you to remain steadfast and to continue further. Let me tell you, when a woman dresses in a mini skirt and she's showing her cleavage and she's showing, for example, whatever she has to offer and she has pasted herself with one inch of icing, for example, what do they call it? <laughs> they call it makeup, one inch of it. And she is upset because of this and that. And she has, you know, sprayed herself with the latest of scents and she walks down the street. What type of person does she attract? Ask yourself, this is a very strong question. She attracts a player, not a husband. She attracts a player, not a future husband. A man will play. Astaghfirullah, shaitan is great. Shaitan, great in the sense that he's big, his plan is big. Allah is greater than all. So if you follow the plan of Allah, when you are covered, you are very, very calm. You know, I, on the aircraft, subhanallah, we met so many people, mashallah, beautiful people. I always notice little things because I learn. I learn from noticing. I noticed there was a sister, very, very respectful, so respectful. There was dua coming from my heart. Ya Allah, protect these people. Ya Allah, grant them goodness. Ya Allah, grant them happiness. Ya Allah, look, what is... Dry, you know, if you are, for example, traveling, a lot of people, when they are traveling, they want to dress up, right? I, where are you going? I'm going. I'm flying to Dubai, right? Subhanallah. So they are dressed up. Do you know what? In essence, if you are a person who looks down, you are concerned about Allah, you are fulfilling your duty, someone will look for those qualities when they know we are looking for the mother of our children and we are looking for a wife. When those qualities are the qualities that are being looked for, you can have good news for the future. You can have good news for the future. But if you've become enslaved by the latest technology, you know, I always look at the verse of the Quran in order to strike a balance between technology and between materialism and Islam and the deen. Allah says in Surah Al-Baqarah when he's speaking about the dua that people make when they go for hajj. The dua that people make when they go for hajj. Some people, they make dua only for the dunya and Allah says, فَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَقُولُ رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا وَمَا لَهُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنْ خَلَاقًا They go, they make a dua, Oh Allah, give me this in the dunya. They have nothing about the akhirah, they didn't even ask. So they say, Oh Allah, make me a rich person. Oh Allah, grant me this. Oh Allah, grant me a car, grant me a house, grant me a beautiful property here and there, an investment this way, grant me good health, grant me whatever else. But you forgot to ask Allah about the akhirah. That is a loss. But we have, on the other hand, Allah says, وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَقُولُ رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةً وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَةً وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ أُولَئِكَ لَهُمْ نَصِيبٌ مِمَّا كَسَبُوا From among the people are those who say, Oh our Lord, give us in this world and what else are you asking for? Give us goodness in this world. Give us goodness in the hereafter. And on top of that, save us from the punishment of the fire. What punishment? Of the fire. So that verse has three du'as. Divide them. One for the dunya. The other two are for the akhirah. It shows you that it is more important to make du'a for the akhirah than for the dunya. Yes, you will lead a life of goodness because you, everyone wants to lead a comfortable life. May Allah give it to us. I mean, but it is Allah who will give you the future. He will give you the akhirah. Like I said last night at Masjid Al-Furqan, I made mention of a very powerful point. Allah did not promise that you will get what you want on earth, but he promised contentment if you follow his instruction. And Allah says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, He taught us through the blessed lips of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if you lead your life according to what we want, we will make you lead a life after death according to what you want. Did you hear that? 
if you lead your life according to what we want, we will give you a life after death, which is eternal according to what you want. So 60, 70, 80 years, just be in accordance with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there is beauty. Allah knows that we are weak. We are man. So Allah has kept something known as tawbah. And the hadith says, Inna Allah ta'ala yaqbilu tawbat al-abdi ma lam yugharghir. Allah accepts the repentance of a slave for as long as he has not got to the point of gharghara. You know what is gharghara? The sound comes from the throat. When the soul is being taken away from the body, it starts from the feet. It goes up. You still have a chance. You can still say, Oh Allah, forgive me. Oh Allah, grant me mercy. Oh Allah, forgive me. I repent for my sins. I regret. Have hope in the mercy of Allah. My brothers and sisters, those who are terminally ill, may Allah grant you cure. You are ill, you are elderly, you need up to the last minute to have hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You must have hope. You die with hope. You die with a smile. Even if you have pain, you die knowing that this is the last time we will suffer this pain. Oh Allah, we know you are taking us to a better place. That is Iman. So if we seek forgiveness, Allah will forgive us. Yesterday I received an email from someone in the same city. He says, I have committed so many sins and I have done so much. And I was told when I promised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I will never do this again. And I did it again. So now I was told I am doomed. There is no tawbah for me. Wallahi, do not be lost. Tawbah is for everyone, for as long as you are breathing, for as long as your soul has not got to your throat. When it gets to your throat, the door of tawbah is closed. The door is now closed. This is why... Let's not be like the hypocrites whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes in Surah Al-Mu'min. In Surah Al-Mu'minun, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the hypocrites and Allah says, when death comes to one of them, they will say, Oh Allah, send us back. We want to do good deeds in what we have left behind. Now we have seen the reality. Allah says, no, never. Even if the person had gone back, they would have repeated the same sins once again. So my brothers and sisters, don't lament over the past in a way that it blocks you from progression in the future. You need to, yes, be sad that you've wasted time, but there is always a turning point. Turn today for the sake of Allah. Oh Allah, forgive me. I have sinned. I have wronged. From this day on, I will never miss my prayer. I will dress appropriately. I will worship you alone. I will try my best to follow the example of Muhammad And I will try to reach out to as many people as possible in order to leave a legacy as a follower of Muhammad Many of us are not interested in leaving legacies. We are interested in living our own life. Fulfilling whims and fancies. Leave a legacy. Look at the future. You need to build your nation. You need to build the future for your children and great-grandchildren. Tomorrow, they will be able to say, My grandfather, mashallah. We take a look at Al-Hajj Al-Hasan, Dantata. We heard he passed away 1955. May Allah grant him Jannah. Subhanallah. What a legacy he's left behind. People speak about him today and they are proud of Kanu. Subhanallah. He's one of the fathers of Kanu. Do you agree? Subhanallah. What about you? Don't think, no, I'm just sitting back, I'm relaxed and so on. You might be one of the fathers of the future in a way that you may contribute in truthfulness, in honesty, in prayer, in goodness, in morality, in conduct, in reaching out to people, you know, in visiting the sick and the elderly. This is where the youth should be, not wasting your time in nightclubs. What do you achieve by going to the nightclub? Study the musicians of today. And according to me, music today, the musical industry has gone right to the point of pornography. It's become pornographic such that it is an embarrassment to watch those singers singing. They show their behind, they show their cleavages, they want to, they want to engage in behavior on the stage that is worse than pornographic material. And they call it singing. What's wrong? It's only music. That's what they say. What's wrong? It's only music. Wallahi, it's a door that has through it a lot of evil. Remember, 
When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has presented us with something pure, why do you want to replace it with something impure? Why? Learn to cut bad habits, throw them out. Wallahi, we need to build the future. Don't you agree? We are living in a society or at a time, maybe not our society, but I know across the globe and nowadays you have the phone which bears witness to all the evil that is happening. Don't you agree we are living at a time where or in times where the world is hypersexualized. Everything is about the opposite sex. Everything is calling people towards haram. Things are even calling people towards na'udhu billah, astaghfirullah, the same sex. May Allah forgive us. May Allah strengthen us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a turning point in our lives such that we start worrying about the future. Don't worry about yourself. I was saying moments ago, worry about the community. Worry about your nation. You are one of them. You will be a builder. The minute you think, no, 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 I'm still young. I need to enjoy. Let me go and party. Most of those musicians are actually on sleeping pills and antidepressants. Did you know that? Some of them have committed suicide. I don't want to mention the names. Maybe you know them. They have gone fed up with their lives. You know why? They have taken Allah out of the equation. That's the reason. They have taken Allah out of the equation. People look at them. They are successful. You know what they are called? They, they make or they engage in a performance on stage. You know what's a performance? They are performing. That's not their real life. It's like the actors at Hollywood are acting. They are just actors, but their real life is something else. So we want to live our life as though we are actors and actresses, not realizing that even their real lives are upside down. Subhanallah. They are just showing you something. It's a screen play, a script which they are playing. Why do you want to do that, my beloved youth? Live the real life. The real life is tough. It's not a joke. Don't be in a dream thinking that life is going to be easy. No, life is tough for every single one. No matter who you are, it is tough. You will have challenges of so many different natures. But the winner is he who just seeks the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and continues in the, in the path. Bearing in mind, we need to build. We are here. We are here on earth. You know, there is a verse in Surah Al-Baqarah when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the angels, وَإِذْ قَالَتِ الْمَلَائِكَةُ إِنِّي جَاعِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَةً Allah says to the angels that I am creating a khalifa on earth. One of the meanings of the term khalifa is the ones who come one after the other. One of the meanings of the term khalifa, those who come one after the other. What does that mean? You will be there, after that your children will be there. Before you, your fathers were there, your forefathers were there. What happened? Leave a good mark. Wallahi. Leave a good mark. Look at Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. He was a young man. He suffered. He struggled. Yet he was one of the most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with us. We don't want to see struggling. We don't want to see suffering. Look at Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was a young man. He went through challenges. He was an orphan, subhanallah. With us, when they are orphans, people look at them sometimes and say, Oh, by the way, the hadith says, Ana wa kafilul yatimi fil jannah. Myself and the one who looks after the orphans will be like these two fingers in paradise. He was an orphan, but he was the most loved of creation. He was the most blessed, the most honored. He went through challenges. Why? If Allah wanted, Allah could have sent angels to carry him everywhere. Because indeed, his status and rank is higher than that of the angels. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided, no, let him go in as an example for others to be able to follow. He, he came on earth. You and I are able to follow that example. Look at his character. Immaculate. Look at his respect of people. Absolutely amazing. Completely perfect. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam, he's a young man. He tells his father, his own father. And my beloved youth, when your elders are going wrong, with respect, you need to tap them. You don't have to create disaster because when you create disaster, do you know what happens? You do not solve a problem. Yesterday I spoke about it. I want to repeat it again. When we have a disagreement, we should never resort to violence, my brothers and sisters. When we have a disagreement, we must as youth learn to be as educated enough Islamically and secularly to be able to sit with those we disagree. That is a leader. If you are a leader, you sit with those you disagree once, twice, 
20 times, 200 times, one year, five years, 10 years. But you solve the problem teaching your children and the future generations. These people had a problem, but mashallah, they didn't give up for 15 years and then they solved the matter. Subhanallah, rather than killing each other in a way that the problem did not resolve itself, we went back 50 years. We achieved so much and suddenly we are 50 years behind. Why? Because people started killing each other. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us mercy. It's a very strong point to say dialogue is something so interesting in Islam. Take a look at the treaty of Hudaybiyah. After that treaty, Allah revealed a verse and a whole surah. Indeed, we have granted you a victory, a clear victory. And the Sahaba radiallahu anhum were asking a question. Is this a victory? Is this really a victory? We, what did we do? We sat, we wanted to go for Umrah. The kuffar, they stopped us from going for Umrah. Is that a victory? And then we had to sit with them. They told us, we take out the name of your messenger. We don't believe in him as a messenger. They took it out. Is that a victory? Then they said, for 10 years, there will not be war. But anyone who comes to you from us, you send him back. And anyone who comes to us from you, we do not send him back. Is that a victory? The Prophet ﷺ agreed with all the points. He made peace. He sat with them. He sat with them and he spoke to them and he discussed with them and he arrived at a conclusion and a solution. And after that, he went away without fulfilling the Umrah. Do you know that? Imagine you arrive in Makkah al Mukarramah or Medina Munawwara and you are there at the outskirts and they tell you, go back. We would get angry and upset and the whole world would stand up and sit down. We would start swearing and shouting. Whereas as the Prophet ﷺ was leaving, he was told, <laughs> We have granted you a clear victory. Why? You don't know. You followed the channels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is going to take care of this entire issue in the next few years. A few years later, they entered Makkah al-Mukarramah victorious. A few years later, not long. This was sixth of Hijri. Four, five years, four years later, they entered Makkah al-Mukarramah victorious. Victorious meaning they were the leaders. Subhanallah, the treaty worked at the time when the treaty was in place. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam sent messages to the kings and the leaders across the globe. He sees the opportunity of peace. What does this show? My brothers and sisters, with peace, we can reach far and wide. With war, we go backwards even on our own achievements. When people know Kanu as the hub of the trader's route and so on, Wallahi, if we have a war or if there is no peace, how do you expect development? How do you expect people to want to continue using it as the route? And remember, where people flourish, even your deen will flourish. I remember speaking to someone and he said, my brother, why are you speaking about hubs that are trade routes? Why don't you speak about hubs that are spiritual routes? And I said, my brother, have you forgotten that Islam spread across the globe mostly through the traders? Have you forgotten that? Look at Far East Asia, the area known as Jawa. Today we perhaps name it Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore, those areas, that area. How did Islam get there? History is witness that they were the traders. It was a hub. They were honest people. They had character conduct. That's what I've spoken about this morning. Develop your character. Worry about the future. When there is a deal, we need to be honest. To the degree that we say, my brother, you are buying this vehicle. I just want you to know that at one day I had an accident with the car and I panel beated the front. And he will say, no, thank you very much. Jazakumullahu khairan. Be honest. The Prophet ﷺ speaks about the barakah and the blessings in an honest deal. And he says, فَإِن كَذَبَ وَكَتَمَ مُحِقَتْ بَرَكَةُ بَيْعِهِمَا If the true, the traders are dishonest and they are liars, they are cheating, they are deceiving, covering, hiding the false then the blessings will be snatched away from that particular deal. وَإِن صَدَقَ وَبَيَّنَ بُورِكَ لَهُمَا فِي بَيْعِهِمَا The hadith, the Prophet ﷺ says, if they are honest, and if they, are, they make things clear as business people, 
Allah will give them barakah in the deal. What is barakah? The blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So be honest, be upright, learn to do things in the correct way. Those who are wealthy from amongst us, they have worked hard and toiled for years on end to become rich, for example. But the disease we have today, there are people who want to become rich overnight. A person graduates from university and he thinks to himself, I still don't have a car. I still don't have a house. Now what should I do? I think, no, no, no. How did these people do it? Wallahi, my father only bought a house. I think when he was about 50 years old, if I'm not mistaken, 45, 50 years old. Today, we don't want our daughters to get married to a man who doesn't have a house. But you don't know the majority of the world lives in rented accommodation. They, their quality of life is better sometimes than those who own the house. They pay the rent and they continue. Sometimes we say, no, no, no. You want to marry this man? Yes. What does he have? That's the first question we ask. What does he have? What does he have? Wallahi, what a good man. إِذَا أَتَاكُمْ مَنْ تَرْضَوْنَ دِينَهُ وَخُلُوقَهُ فَزَوِّجُوهُ when someone comes to you, his deen is good, his character is good. Forget about what he has, get him married. Because the hadith says, there will be fitna on earth if you don't do that. <laughs> Listen to the young people complaining, mashallah. <laughs> Listen to the young complaining, I'm sure that means, and I don't know, it means it is something we need to address. My brothers and sisters, listen to this carefully. You want your daughter to marry a rich man, but you, when you got married, you didn't have anything. Subhanallah. And only 20 years later, you managed to buy your first car. Subhanallah. And now you want a man. Wallahi, even if he doesn't have shoes, there is no harm to say, come my son, you are such a beautiful individual. I see you in the masjid every day. Your character is good. Will you look after my daughter? He says, yes, I will. You can have her. Subhanallah, who will do that? I think we still have a few years to go, inshallah. <laughs> May Allah make it easy for us. But that is the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that I told you, you want success, make it easy to marry, facilitate it. Don't let the culture that you have take you backward. And I must spend a moment to speak about culture. When a person is cultured, they are definitely very good. We are not, we are never preaching against culture. Culture to be cultural is really a good thing. But the problem is when the culture clashes with Islam, we have to discount it. Did you hear that? That's the only thing. So in our culture, we respect the old as well that agrees with Islam. We do this, we do that. We have so many different methods. Perhaps there are certain foods, there are certain things that are cultural. Maybe when a person is giving birth, it is cultural to do this and to do that. Islam does not interfere in all of that. Islam does not interfere. But Islam says where you are usurping the right of someone else, you have to discount the culture, push it aside. Let me explain. If culture is making it very difficult for you to marry, you need to know there is a problem. You need to go back to Islam and you need to make your culture Islam. That's when we will succeed. This is the future. This is my message to the youth and even to those who are slightly older. I know when we are speaking here, we are speaking to those who have children as well. Please facilitate for your children. Don't become upset. Don't become angry. Sometimes let me explain to you. And now I'm going to say something that you don't normally hear. And I don't think I've said it before. Let me say it for the first time in Kanu. Do you agree we are living in an age where the world has become a global village. You know me and I know you through what? Through the internet, through the phone. The phone is in my pocket. And how do I know you? I know you because I've heard and you have heard. That's how it is. And perhaps we have met maybe on Instagram, maybe on Twitter, maybe on Facebook. I am not encouraging the use of social media when it comes to wrong and bad. Every time you pick your phone up, ask yourself one question. Will Allah be pleased with what I'm about to do? That's all. If you answer that question, you will know whether what you are doing is right or wrong. If not, Wallahi, you can throw it away. That Twitter, that social media, nothing is going to help you. I know people who don't have clothes, but they go to the store, they go to try out the clothes, they take big, big selfies, they show the world we are wearing new clothes, and they walk out of the shop without the clothes. What is the point? Wallahi, people are doing that. We are dying with this materialistic disease. I rather live myself, show the people I don't have shoes, but I'm a happy person. I fulfill my salah. My smile is broader than someone who maybe has. May Allah forgive us. So what I was saying, 
Sometimes our children happen to meet someone respectfully of the opposite sex somewhere like a university, like for example, online maybe perhaps. We are not saying that is ideal. Ideally, you should have spoken to your parents or you should have spoken to the adults and they should have been doing things the correct way. But let us face reality. That is not what is happening. That is not what is happening. So my message to you as parents, if your child comes up with a proposition of their own, I plead with you to study it carefully. Don't just reject it. Maybe the man who or the woman who they have chosen themselves might just be a God sent to come into your home in order to bring blessings and goodness. Don't just reject it. You need to know even Bilal ibn Rabah radiallahu anhu. You know, he was from Africa, yet he was a Sahabi of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why? Have you ever asked yourself, what was the benefit of Allah choosing this man to be in the midst of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Can I tell you one of the reasons? Because for us who are from Africa to learn a lesson from whatever happened to him in his life, and to learn that color means nothing in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came back from Al-Mi'raj, he mentioned the point of the khash khasha of Bilal ibn Rabah radiallahu anhu. He says, I heard your footsteps in paradise. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. I heard your footsteps in paradise. Imagine the other sahaba, how they must have been feeling. When is my name going to come? Is he going to talk about me? Did he hear about me in Jannah? But he says, no, I heard Bilal ibn Rabah's footsteps in Jannah. Radiallahu an. He once went to get married, him and his brother. And the people, they were a little bit reluctant because obviously very dark in skin. A little bit reluctant. Not to say they didn't want. You know what he said? I am Bilal and this is my brother. You know the standing we have. If you are going to allow us to marry your daughters, Alhamdulillah. If not, Allah will provide for us. Do you know what they said? Do you know what they said? Subhanallah. They said, Wallahi, we will get you married to our daughters. There is nothing wrong. Subhanallah. Those are the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. I can picture young men building the courage to go to the fathers of those whom they want to marry and say, you know what? I really don't have much, but I'm a respectable, honorable person. I'd like to hope. And I would like to ask for the hand of your daughter in marriage. The problem is, people today look at you and say, what do you have? Can I tell you a true story without mentioning names? I was studying in Medina Munawwara many years before me. There was someone who studied in Egypt. There was someone who became a world leader, a president. He studied in Egypt. When he was in Egypt, he wanted to marry someone. So he spoke to this girl and said, look, I would like to get to know someone to marry you. And she said, look, speak to my father. He said, no problem. Obviously, that's the discussion. If someone approaches you as a female, your first point of of comment should be speak to my father or speak to someone who is responsible for me. And at the same time, this man went. So he was in Egypt and he went to visit this man in, in, you know, in the culture or whatever. He happened to be from a totally different country. And he says, you know, I, he went with his team of friends and we would like to get married to your daughter. What do you have? That's the question. He says, Wallahi, I'm a student. I'm still studying Islam. I'm studying the deen. And I don't know uh, what the future holds for us. But inshallah, I, am, I will look after your daughter as I look after myself. That's the question. Th th that was the point. So the father rejected, no, in our culture, you need to provide so much money. You need to give the furniture. You need to do this. You have nothing. Please, there is the door. You can walk out. But please, my father, walk out. So he walked out. <laughs> that year he graduated. He went back to his country. There happened to be elections, small nation, subhanallah. And in the elections, he was voted the president of the nation. <laughs> One of the first stops that he wanted to make as a president was going back to Egypt, subhanallah. <laughs> so he went back to Egypt and as the VIP, they, 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 they welcomed him at the airport with a red carpet. The president was there to see him and so on. Here comes our, our supposed father-in-law watching the television. Ah, Ada, what's happening here? <laughs> is this not the man who came to... Yeah, 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 he is. He's the man. How do I get hold of him? How do I get hold of him? He ran, wallahi, to Abbasiyah, where there is the dormitory for those who are students. And he went looking for this man. He found one of the colleagues. He said, wallahi, this guy has become the president. He's already married and it's over. He said, tell him, come, come, come. I will give him my daughter. No problem. 
Wallahi, look at the disease. Allah did not want that family to mix with this type of people who are in the eyes of Allah, perhaps on another level. This is a true example. But I want to tell you, Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, it is happening in our homes. Sometimes we chase away people who are more honorable than we are. Maybe not financially. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. I hope I've spent a moment to address this issue because it is definitely a very, very serious issue. That having been said, I am in no way promoting that you do things behind your parents' backs or you do things against what would please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is just a fair call telling people to face reality. The reality on the ground is not the dream that you always have. Sometimes there are people perhaps who are going through issues that need this type of a statement. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. Similarly, for the youth, a very powerful message. I started off by saying it and I'm going to repeat it. 10 minutes, 20 minutes, half an hour of that excitement and joy that you may achieve through sin will be a lifetime of disaster. You draw closer to Allah when you please Allah. And you draw closer to the devil when you please the devil. So if you have a life of drugs, my brothers and sisters, cut it now. Promise Allah, I will give it up now. Don't say I'm going to go from tomorrow, I will start. Inshallah, this Ramadan, I will start. Inshallah, Hajj, I will start. That is the first plan of shaitan. Shaitan makes you say, Inshallah, sometimes. Do you know that? When some people say, Inshallah, they mean I don't want. That's what it means. If you tell someone, will I see you? Say, yeah, Inshallah. What does that mean? That means I don't want to see you. <laughs> you need to say, Inshallah, I am starting now. I want to change today. I have not been fulfilling Salatul Subh, Salatul Fajr. I will start today, now. Because today, look, we are sitting here. This is a gathering that is blessed. The hadith says whenever people are gathered in order to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the, the angels surround them, the mercy of Allah descends upon them, the angels are making dua for them, the message goes up obviously, the goodness is being mentioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to those whom he is with. When we are talking of Allah, Allah is talking of us. This is a blessed, blessed occasion to make a promise now is valuable. But if you say, when I walk out, the spirituality outside will not be the same as it is inside here. Remember that. You have someone who came to you from afar. Wallahi, I won't lie to you. Three days ago, I was in the Philippines. I flew for one and a half days in order to come to you in Kanu. Do you know that? And what is my message? The message is, let us change for the sake of Allah. Let us become better. Let us quit the bad habits we have in order for us to achieve the mercy of Allah. Don't you want solutions to the problems that you have in your life? The owner of the solution is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Please him, it will come. I remember telling a young man, you know, you need to start praying for solution. He prayed for three days. He came back to me. I've started praying, but I have no solution. I said, brother, you didn't pray for 20 years. Now pray for another 20 years and your problem will be solved. He said, but I need patience. I said, dedication. When I say turn to Allah, Allah will solve your problems. I don't mean that just say, oh Allah, you will solve my problems. I'm turning to you. Once your problem is solved, you turn back towards shaitan. No, people read salah sometimes because they have a big issue. You know, I give the example. Mashallah, here in Kanu, I am quite aware of the fact that many people, I hope, inshallah, they get up even before Salatul Fajr in order to read the Hajjud. I am quite aware of this. May Allah make it easy for us. May Allah accept it from all of us. But there are some of us who are weak. We don't like to fulfill Salah. So Allah loves you enough to say, you know what, let me give you a little reminder. So suddenly what happens? You fall down. Your knee starts hurting. Your back starts paining. And now they say you need to have a back operation or you need to have an operation on your leg. So what happens? You say, no, people are scaring you. You might be paralyzed for the rest of your life. So you get up in the morning and you start, Allahu Akbar. Wow, mashallah. Why? You have a problem. That's why. You have an issue. That's why. Isn't that the mercy of Allah? That's why Allah says, Inna Allah ida ahabba abdan ibtala. When Allah loves you, He tests you so that He keeps you crying. Those tears are the ones which will take you to Jannah. When Allah loves you, He keeps you in a problem so that you keep close to Him so that that closeness will take you to Jannah. That's why Allah says, Inna yuwaffa sabiruna ajrahum bi hisab. 
Those who bear sabr, Allah gives them the reward without any limit. Unlimited reward you will get. For the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have endured. So endure for the sake of Allah. Life will never ever be a bed of roses. It will always have hardship in it. Remember, fulfill your salah, fulfill your obligations unto Allah. My beloved sisters, your dress code, your chastity, everything for the sake of Allah, you will find in due course, Allah's hand will be in everything regarding your life. Everything will be easy. You will be a happy person. Things happen according to you. You know this was Allah's decree. Things happen according, not according to you. You know that this happened according to Allah's decree. The same thing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. My brothers and sisters, indeed, we have a lot of hope because we see so many youth interested in the deen. Wallahi, there is an awakening regarding the deen. People are fed up of everything that is happening across the globe in terms of materialistic life. If you take a look at the internet, you will find, Wallahi, it is like a city on its own. On there, there is the nightclub. On there, there is a corner where you can intoxicate yourself. On there, there is a pornographic corner. On there, there is a masjid. On there, there are good messages and people. On there, there are online Arabic courses. On there, there are online universities of an Islamic nature that will teach you the deen. It is totally up to you where you choose to go. Where you choose to go will determine your future. Remember that. Your communication with other people. They say, if you have more than 500 friends, after that, they are not really friends. They are just people who, who you have added to feel big. That's it. May Allah forgive us. They say, general on average, a human being can have 500 real proper friends. Beyond that, you don't really know them. They are not your friends. Beyond that, it is just acquaintance. So normally when you see a person, mashallah, Facebook, and they are following 5,000 people, remember they only know a few of them. The rest of them are, by the way, they cheer you when they see that you have eaten something nice, and they cheer you when they see that you are showing yourself. If you take a look at the posts with the most likes, they are the posts of women who are showing their bodies. Do you know that? They have the most likes. And we fall prey to it. We fall prey to it. Wallahi, for what reason? Why do you have to show your body? They say, no, ah, I didn't get more likes. Next time I'm going to show more of my cleavage. Wallahi, that's a reality. It's a sickness and a disease. Don't fall prey to the devil. A day will come when you are older, when you may regret how you used your young age. That's why the Prophet ﷺ says, use your youth before it is taken away. Look at the hadith known as Hadith al-Sab'ah. The hadith of the seven people who will be granted a special shade on the day of judgment. The Prophet ﷺ says, Shabun nasha'a fi ibadatillahi ta'ala. A young person, male or female, who has nurtured, grown up in the obedience of Allah. May Allah make it easy for us. You will achieve so much of inner joy when you have blocked yourself from a sin that was so easy to be committed. Let me give you another of those categories of VIPs of the seven who will be granted the shade on the day of judgment. رَجُلٌ دَعَتْهُ إِمْرَأَةٌ ذَاتُ مَنْصَبٍ وَجَمَالٍ فَقَالَ إِنِّي أَخَافُ اللَّهَ فَقَالَ إِنِّي أَخَافُ اللَّهَ A man and the example is also for a woman who is called by the opposite sex, someone who's really good looking, someone who has a lot of wealth and someone who has status to commit adultery or fornication. And they're on the verge of it. They said, you know what? I fear Allah and they walk away on the verge of it. They, nothing is stopping them. Everything is facilitated. The only thing that stops them, I fear Allah and they walk away. Allah says you deserve VIP status on the day of judgment. You deserve VIP status on the day of judgment. Why? You stopped yourself from committing such a sweet, sweet meaning by the devil's terms. The devil made it sweet. You stopped yourself by committing such an attractive sin only for me. I need to honor you. You need to get an award. Subhanallah. You need to get an award. What is the award? Come, you will be among the VIPs on the day of judgment. Do you know there are times when Allah does not look at other deeds? He just looks at one massive thing and he says, I don't want to look at anything else. You just go to Jannah. That's it. It's over. You just go to paradise. May Allah look at some of our deeds in that way. I mean, there is an example of someone who was passionate to animals. They got Jannah. There is an example of a prostitute who was passionate to animals. She got Jannah. Allah forgave her. Why? 
Allah is showing us that you need to be compassionate towards the other creatures of Allah. O people of Kano, O people of Nigeria, my message to you is to be kind to one another. If Allah gives Jannah and paradise to people who are kind to animals, what do you think will be the status of he or she who is kind to fellow human beings? If Allah gives a status for someone who is kind to another creature of Allah, what do you think will be the status of someone who is kind to another human being who is Ashraful Makhluqat, the most noble of all creatures? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says it in Surah Al-Teen. لَقَدْ خَلَقُنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمٍ We have created mankind in the best of postures. Imagine, have you thought about it? Look at yourself in the mirror, for example. Subhanallah. Do you think of any other place that your eyes can be? It's a challenge from Allah. Allah says, I have created you the best possible way. There is no better way to create man. Man was the best. Do you want your legs anywhere else? Your nails, these nails, do you want them anywhere else? Your hair from your head, where do you want it? On your arm somewhere here to, to perhaps see your beard this way here? Is that what you want? Is there any other posture you would prefer? The rest are inferior to man. The animals, look at how they are. So Allah says, look, we made you the best. Where is your nose? Imagine if we were breathing through our ears. I wonder how you would have to smoke. <laughs> May Allah forgive us. So these are some of the messages I have for you this morning, subhanAllah. I chose when I came up here to speak for 45 minutes, I'm exactly one hour and 52 seconds on the dot. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us. Indeed, there is a lot that I wanted to speak about. So much of the problems we are facing, the challenges regarding drugs and the nightlife, being online and so on. Brothers and sisters, when you use Instagram and Facebook and Twitter, please be responsible. Please be responsible. I want to give you one last example. What you do online will remain after you die. Do you know that? So be careful what pictures you put because if you die today, that picture will remain. People might say Alhamdulillah forever or they might say Astaghfirullah forever. Remember that. Be responsible. There was a group of young people and they were interested in pornography at a time. This was some years back. And they decided, you know what, it's very expensive to pay for subscriptions. So one of us out of 25, we will pay for subscriptions and... What will happen is when you get all these pornographic images and videos, you will forward them to the other 24 people. So they were a group of 25. And they decided, okay, we will do this. It's a true story. So they, the one subscribed and he was getting the material and he created a group. And he used to have automatic forward, which means as soon as the message comes to me, it is automatically forwarded to so many people. And it carried on for a while. One day there was a car crash. The brother passed away. He passed away and he was gone. Ila rahmatillah. May Allah forgive him. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala overlook his sins and grant him Jannah. But his friends were shocked. They were stunned. Why? Young man. No one expected this wealthy young person to pass away. Death knows no age. Al mawtu babun wa kullun nasi dakhiluhu. Death is a door. Everyone will go through it. So what happened? He passed away. They were shocked. They went to the house. They were saying, you know, their condolences. They had led Salatul Janaza after washing him and so on. They were crying. They were in tears and they buried him at the graveyard. They said a little prayer for him. They walked back to the house and they were now, you know, in their own respectable houses. And suddenly at midnight, 12 o'clock, everyone's phone was beeping. What happened? Message from who? From this guy. But where is he? He's dead. He's already gone. You, oh, they opened it. Guess what was in it? Full of pornographic material. Full of pornographic material. Astaghfirullah. They tried to go back because it was coming every day automatically. Are we not ashamed if I put up a nude image of myself online? Don't you think it will last for much longer than after I have left the dunya? So be careful what you put online. Make sure that it is something that if you die, people will say Alhamdulillah. It was something good. They will not say, Audhu Billah, Astaghfirullah, and give examples of your, your life in the lectures. They got back to the firm, the company, and they said, look, this is an embarrassment. They said, sorry, we have millions, if not billions, 
of people who have subscribed. For us to find one man, we are sorry, you cannot. He has paid subscriptions for two years, you will have to wait until it expires. The only thing we can say, may Allah forgive such people. May Allah forgive us. But more importantly, may it be a lesson for all of us. Be careful, you will leave a legacy. What is the legacy you have left behind? Was it serious? Was it real? Was it for the ummah, for the nation? Or was it something very, very selfish just for yourself and your own pleasure? If it was your, for your own pleasure, it will die before your death or with your death. But if it was for the rest of humanity and for the ummah, and if it was for the nation, by the will of Allah, it will live even beyond your death. And generations later, people will say, such and such a person lived in the city and he passed away in this year, Rahmatullahi Alayhi. They will say, Rahmatullahi Alayhi, next to your name. They will mention good deeds. I was speaking about Ibrahim Alayhi Salam earlier. I want to tell you, he was a young man loved by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. He struggled so much, nobody accepted his message besides two people. Do you know that? One was his nephew Lut and the other was his wife Sarah. They accepted the message. Anyway, he moved out, he went to Haran, he went to various other places. And you know what? He was a man who was dedicated. Not many people followed him. But Allah says, Inna Ibrahim kana ummah. Allahu Akbar. Allah says he was a nation on his own. Even though figures and numbers wise at that stage, there weren't many, but he was a nation. And guess what? Ibrahim alayhi salam was tested one after the other. When he passed his tests, every dua you hear he made, it was not for himself alone. He made a dua for Makkah. Makkah has got a lot of produce. And he says, Waj'al afidatam min nasi tahwi ilayhim. Oh Allah. Ibrahim alayhi salam, hundreds if not thousands of years back, he says, Oh Allah, let the hearts of the people incline towards this place. Can I ask you a question? Who would love to go to Makkah right now? Put up your hand. That is the dua of Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. What was it? It was dedication to Allah alone. He was alone. The people were against him. They wanted to burn him. They kicked him out of the city. His own father. He went to his father, my father, I need to correct you in a nice way. Ya abati inni qad ja'ani min al-ilmi ma lam ya'tik fattabi'ni ahdika siratan sawiyya. Oh my father, knowledge has come to me that did not come to you. Follow me and you will be led to the right path. The father says, no ways, no ways. My beloved parents, sometimes your children know more than you. They will correct you. Take the correction. But my beloved children, there is a way to talk to your parents. There is a way. Don't come and say, Dad, I'm like Ibrahim and you are like the father of Ibrahim. I know more than you. Follow me. Otherwise, you know what will happen. That's not how you talk to your fathers. You talk with utmost respect. Dad, no, mashallah. I understand your point. I see where you are coming from. Learn to talk. Learn to talk. I understand your point. I see where you are coming from. I hear you loud and clear. I have an alternate suggestion. If you would care to actually consider it, perhaps it might be enlightening. That's how you talk. Subhanallah. Did you hear what I said? Acknowledge the opinion. That's my mother. That is my father. They are adults. They have opinions. I heard it. I heard you loud and clear. Mashallah. I acknowledge your op what you have said. You know, I have a small suggestion. What do you think of it? They will be honored to say, my son, you know what? You are actually right. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on us. So this is the way forward for the ummah. Think about the rest. Ibrahim alayhi salam made a dua for his children. Do you know what he says? He says, oh Allah, Rabbana waj'alna muslimayni lak. He says, oh Allah, the two of us, myself and Ismail, my son, make us surrender to you. Make us from those who surrender to your instruction. But did he stop there? No. Do you know what he says? وَمِن ذُرِّيَّتِنَا أُمَّةً مُسْلِمَةً لَكَ Oh Allah, I am worried about my family, my progeny, my generations. Make from them the nation, an ummah, which will worship you, surrender to you. Do you know what Allah gave him? Allah gave him a gift. All the prophets who came after Ibrahim alayhi salam were from his family, including Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam. Because Allah heard the dua. Up to today, we remember Ibrahim alayhi salam in every salah. In every salah. Allah says we left a good reputation for him. In those who came later on. Those who came later on. 
Allah says, we kept a good name for them with, the, with those who came later. So every day we say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Ali Muhammadin kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala Ali Ibrahim. We are mentioning his name every day. Your salah is not over unless you have done that. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us in every single way. I want to spare a moment to acknowledge the brother who is on my left here. Because the way I speak for him to catch up, he needs to be a genius. <laughs> so I don't know, Masha, may Allah bless you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you ease and goodness. It's the first time in my life I have delivered a lecture and right next to me, there are those who are deaf are being catered for. My brothers and sisters, thank Allah that we can hear and we can see. We can hear and we can see. That's another first for Kano, as we say, by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one day, you know, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease to learn this language is extremely difficult. So I wonder and I always wonder what motivates normal people to learn the language of those who cannot hear. What motivates them? That is something unique. May Allah grant you Jannah, my beloved brother, and all those who are doing something for those who might be uh, challenged in one way or another. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you in every way. I want to say one more thing before I close, and that is, you know, the message I gave you today is short, but there are so many other messages by so many other people. Don't just come because you hear the name Mufti Menk. No, anyone who is teaching you goodness, go. Attend, go in your numbers. You never know when Hidayah is being given out and you will get the guidance. Don't just be a single person to say, no, only this guy I will listen to. The rest of them I don't want. No, we are human beings. We all make mistakes, myself included. Maybe something that I might have said might be an error. It's from me and from shaitan. Something that is correct, it's from the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So please learn to support all the activities of the deen as much as you can. In that way, Allah will keep you guided and he will keep your progeny guided as well. Similarly, it is impossible for me to shake the hands of all those who are here. What is more important than shaking the hands is to be shaken by the message. If you are shaken by the message, you have indeed achieved much more than to shake the hand of one man who's going to die sometime soon. And there is nothing he owns of yours and nothing you own of his besides dua. So I am just a human being like you. Don't think that this man is some hero, superstar. We are not musicians. We are not politicians. When we treat each other, we treat each other like human beings, exactly who we are. We are the same. We are equal. Nothing makes you different from me or me from you, except if Allah wills and taqwa. Taqwa is that which will bring us closer to Allah. In the meantime, Brothers and sisters, I am your brother in Islam. And that's where it stops. I am your brother in Islam. That's where it stops. Don't start having these big ideas that you know, this man is this and that. No, no, we are nobodies. We are simply brothers and sisters in Islam. All of us are striving to earn Jannah. The day Allah gives us our book in the right hand, and the day Allah says, go into Jannah, that is the day we can be happy. We will be smiling. That is the day we will be successful. Up, up until then, we ask Allah to have mercy on us. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayhi. تعانق دمعة الفكر تناجي الله في صبر وترجو رحمة تسري فعاش القلب